In this video, I am going to cover hypothesis testing for a population proportion. Here I have the five steps that need to um, be done to be able to do hypothesis testing for population proportion. The first thing you need to do is to check that these following conditions are met. If these conditions are met, then the sample size is large enough for um, it to have a normal sampling distribution. So this has to be checked first. After that, you want to go ahead and state your null and alternative hypotheses. And when you state them, you're going to use the variable p where p represents population proportion. Then you're going to use the one prop z test in the calculator. This one prop z test is um, it's a little easier to do hypothesis testing for proportions than it is for means because there's only one test though um, instead of two like there is for means. So one prop z test is the test you'll use. Um, you'll use that test to get your p value and you'll compare that to the alpha. That'll determine if you reject or fail to reject HO. And then you will use the following chart to determine how you word your conclusion. Okay, so let's get started with an example. A young woman makes a blanket statement about men and says that at least 20% of them are dogs. In a random sample of 150 men, 16 are in fact dogs. At a 1% level of significance, is there enough evidence to reject the claim? So first of all, let's see if n times p is greater than 5. So n in this case, let me write it down here, is 150. And the p that it's talking about is this one right here. So I want to see, is 150 times 20%, is that greater than 5? And yeah, it most definitely is, because 150 times 0.2 is 30, definitely greater than 5. You also want to see if n times q is greater than 5. Now q is just the complement of p, so that would be 150 times 0.8, which is most definitely going to be greater than 5. Okay, so we can use this. So now I want to go ahead and state my null and alternative hypotheses. So she says that it is at least 20 percent. So she's saying p if it's at least, that means it's greater than or equal to 0.2. That's 20%. So because this has an equal to symbol on it, that means this is HO. The null hypotheses always have um, an equal to symbol in them. Okay, And then the alternative hypotheses are the exact opposite. So HA, it would be P and then 0.2. Now since this arrow um, on the inequality symbol is pointing to the right, then the alternative hypothesis needs to point to the left. Okay. So now I have enough information um, to find my, oops, let me fix that decimal point. I have enough information to go ahead and start um, doing my hypothesis testing. Sorry, I keep losing my thing. I got a second screen and it makes my room a little smaller. Anyways, okay, so um, the there's one other variable uh, value that I need to know and this 16 percent is the sample proportion. Sample proportion is represented by the variable p hat. 0.16. Now if I go to stat and then over to test and then one prop z test, the first thing it's going to ask is ask is for PO and that is the number that shows up here inside your um, null and alternative hypotheses so the point two. Then it asks for X. Well right now we don't have X because X is the amount of men that she actually found that were dogs in her sample. And you can find X just by doing N times P. Okay. Or I'm sorry, N times P hat. So 150 times 0.16. And you can actually go ahead and stick that in the calculator here instead of having to calculate it separately. If you do 150 times 0.16, it'll go ahead and tell you that that equals 24. Okay. Then n is the sample size. In this case, it was 150. And then this section here, we want to highlight whatever a symbol is in our in our alternative hypothesis, so I want to highlight the one in the middle and press enter. And then I'm going to highlight calculate and it works like a button, so I need to highlight it and then press enter for it to calculate. 
the value we're interested in right here is p and notice um, we didn't put p hat into the calculator we put x but it does give us p hat so it's good to make sure that that is what you have for your p hat but the thing we do need is this p the one without the hat and it's 0 0.110 so that's my p value so I want to see is my p-value greater than or less than alpha in this case p is greater than alpha so whenever p is greater than alpha you are going to fail to reject HO the way I always remember it is if there's um, a greater than symbol it has the one with more words if it's the less than symbol then it's the one with less words so um, we fail to reject HO. Now before we can go to the next section, it is important to make sure that we have our claim stated. I didn't write it on here. Um, I should have. I always forget what the first problem. But um, her claim was that it was at least 20%. So this was her claim. So her claim was HO. Okay. So the reason that's important is when we go to write our uh, final conclusion. So we need to ask ourselves, is the claim HO? Yes. Do we reject HO? No. So we would say there is not enough evidence to reject the claim that at least 20% of men are dogs. Sorry guys, I know it's kind of a sexist problem, but it's funny, I think. So, Okay, let's try the next one. A poll, of Facebook, a poll on Facebook asked, do you believe in ghosts? Of the 10,435 people that answered, 4,865 answered yes. Use a 1% level of significance to test the claim that most people believe in ghosts. Now, with this example, I don't really need to check that n times p is greater than 5, because this is so big. I mean, yeah, it's going to be greater than 5. Um, so the first thing I want to do is figure out what my claim is. Now this claim is worded a little oddly. Okay, it says most people. So for most people that would mean more than half, right? So the claim is saying that the proportion is greater than 0.5. Okay, the proportion is more than one half. So I'm going to say the proportion um, of the population or P is greater than 0.5. Now because this is a greater than symbol that means this is H A so my claim is H A. Now I need to figure out my H O so my H O is going to look like just like it except my symbol in the middle is going to be different because this one is pointing to the right this one needs to point to the left and all null hypotheses need to contain some kind of equality symbol in them. Okay, So now I just need to figure out what these other values represent. So this 10,435 people, that's my sample size of n, 10,435. And this is the, um, the value of x, the ones that said yes. So x is equal to 4865. So now all I need to do is go over to stat test number five. Okay, so PO it needs to be what is in my hypothesis, uh, what is in my hypotheses, so the point five. My X in this case is four eight six five. My N is one zero four three five. And in this example, I need to highlight whatever is um, in my alternative hypothesis, which is greater than 0.5. So I want to highlight the greater than symbol. And I go down to calculate, enter. So my p value is equal to 1. Okay. 
So P is most definitely greater than alpha, okay, because alpha is 0 0.01, and I should have probably written alpha here, 0 0.01. Alpha here was um, 0 0.01. So P is greater than alpha, therefore um, we fail to reject HO. Okay. So in this example, I need to figure out how to word it based on the fact that the claim was HA. So is the claim HO? No. Do you reject HO? No. So there is not enough evidence to support the claim. that most people believe in ghosts. Okay, so I recommend having um, these important things like a screenshot of them or something, especially this decision chart here. It's going to make um, it a lot easier to do hypothesis testing for a population proportion.